Show of hands, how many of you know the familiar refrain in the New Yorker cartoon, the um, top of the world, the wise man with the beard who dispenses wisdom? You've seen that, right? Shows up. Let me tell you about myth versus reality. We are up in the Himalayas doing a climate change documentary. There is an incredible glacier that feeds the sacred Ganges River, and it's being affected by climate change. And that's a food security issue, a national security issue, and a water security issue. Climbed to the glacier, climbed across the glacier, climbed the moraine over the glacier, where there is a magical alpine meadow that overlooks the glacier that becomes the Ganges. And there's the person living in a cave at the top of the world, dispensing wisdom. Now, none of you in this room will be surprised, but I think you'll all be delighted to know it's not a guy with a beard. It's, of course, a woman. <laughs> she, she spoke American-accented English, even though she was Indian. I asked why. She said she has a master's degree in special ed from Northern Illinois State. <laughs> and she said, what are you up to? I explained, and she said, listen, if people watch your documentary and shrug, you haven't done very much, have you? But here's the key point. If people watch what you've done and they are moved to action, then, young man, your quest is worthy, or words to that effect. And that's why I'm so pleased to be here this evening, because this is a group, this is a group that takes action, the action that we need to make this planet a better place. Thank you. All right, the subject is solid waste. Of course, they give this to a PBS anchorman. <laughs> Did you know that New York City produces and exports 15,000 tons of waste to distant landfills each and every day? That results in $450 million in disposable costs, loss of recyclable materials, and the release of millions of tons of greenhouse gas emissions. Global Greens Coalition for Resource Recovery, it's also called CORE, was launched just last year to help businesses increase profits by transforming this waste into assets through a series of revolutionary model programs. Now in September, CORE announced just such a partnership with seven Starbucks outlets right here in Manhattan. This pilot program is testing cost-effective practices for the collection and recycling of coffee cups. Tackling just this single element of our waste stream would have significant impact because every year 58, get this number, 58 billion cups are used in the United States at restaurants, events, in your home. If all paper cups in the country were recycled, 645,000 tons of waste would be diverted from landfills each year. And if you look at the effect on greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, that's like taking 450,000 passenger cars from our roads every year. This is significant stuff. We wish CORE great success in making this extremely promising collaboration with Starbucks a worldwide movement. <laughs> Series also believes that we cannot afford to do business as usual and that businesses themselves have the pivotal role in transitioning us toward a more sustainable world. Ceres is a national nonprofit organization that brings together networks of investors, environmental organizations, and other public interest groups to address global sustainability challenges such as climate change. Since its founding back in 1989, Ceres has introduced a bold set of profitable business initiatives where capital markets promote the well-being of human society and also protect the Earth's biological systems and resources. The foundations of their vision are honest accounting of the real costs associated with pollution. Also, higher standards of business leadership that value people over short-term profits, bold solutions that accelerate green innovation, and policies that reward sustainable performance. Ceres is creating the tools to weave environmental and social justice into the very fabric of global business. And now is, it is my great honor to present the 2009 Organizational Design Award to Ceres. Accepting the award is their president, Mindy Luber. So Matt, if you think you look young, I like those pictures of me five years ago. It's always nice to look back. Um, this is terrific. It is wonderful to be here. Thank you all, and thank you for all that you've done. I want to first congratulate the other recipients, people who I've known and admired for a long time. 
uh, they indeed deserve the congratulations tonight. And to Global Green, Global Green has been about breaking down walls, it has been about bringing people together, and you have been about seeking solutions. Gorbachev was about worldwide challenges, it was a, he was about audacity, hope, taking what were impossible problems and making them problems that could be broken down one by one and actually addressed. If we could bring down the Berlin Wall, we could take on the challenge of global warming. We have before us together both the greatest challenge we could possibly imagine as well as the greatest opportunity. If we use the lessons that Gorbachev taught, the lessons of bringing down the wall, the lessons of being audacious, the lessons of taking extraordinary challenges, our challenge today of bringing down our carbon footprint by 80% by the year 2050, perhaps the greatest public health, national security, environmental and economic crisis that any of us could possibly imagine. But we also have the opportunity of hope. And with the kind of solutions we're hearing about in the world, the kind of solutions that have been taken on in this room, I am convinced that the models of Gorbachev, the models of Global Green, what Siri sets out to do, of bringing sustainability issues to the capital markets, of working with business, with financial leaders, and with environmental activists together to take on what is an extraordinary challenge that we actually can follow the successes of Gorbachev, of the wall. We can get to the point where we bring our carbon footprint down by 80% by the year 2050. It is not going to be easy. It is going to take all of us. It is going to take us pushing well beyond any limits that we've seen. We have reached critical mass. People believe that sustainability is a real issue, but our actions belie that. We are moving at a snail's pace when we need to be turbocharging this debate and moving at a pace that none of us really could even imagine. But it can be done with leaders like people in this room, with financial leaders, with activists, with scientists like Steven Schneider, with business people like Peter Darby, who recently took on the Chamber of Commerce, who will be awarded later, but who stood up and said, we have to do things differently. Now is the time. On behalf of my kids, and everybody who knows me, I talk about Abe and Jesse, and Abe and Jesse is the love of my lives, as well as proxies for your families, for your children. We have no choice but to turbocharge our efforts in every part of what we do as consumers, as investors, as business leaders, integrate sustainability into all that we do, address global warming with the passion and the magnitude it will take, and it will not all be about suffering. There is opportunity. This is about building our green economic future. We can make the internet revolution look small, and we must. And with the kind of hope and spirit and creativity and audacity in this room, I'm convinced that Abe and Jesse have a future. To all of you, thank you so much for inviting me.